the f*** is wrong with you? New Horn Gaming Podcast. We blew it up. This is the Mule Horn Gaming Podcast. <laughs> I well, can't I do it as good as like dirty. That. I'm just trying to help out these kids and these women. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Whoa. Mule Horn 117. That was our new intro there for the Mule Horn Gaming Podcast. Yeah, no, probably not going to stick. Yeah, just throwing everyone off here. Anyways, uh, we got a cool podcast lined up for you guys. We're going to talk a lot of different stuff. There's so much stuff that came out this week and previous weeks that... How much stuff? We see a plethora? A plethora. A plethora. <laughs> yeah. So much. But first, I want to ask how you guys are doing. T-Prime, how you doing? And I'm chilling. Doing all right. I'm and I've actually got some game time in recently. A little extra <gasps> free time as of late. Finished Gears of War. And yeah. jump back right onto Witcher 3. Oh, Good dang. <laughs> yup. You mean you didn't play any Destiny? <laughs> no. You haven't Dude. even touched Rise Dude. of Iron, have you? No. Miss Iron, Miss Iron's always risen, but not that game. <laughs> when you have a choice between a full play, mostly full playthrough of Witcher 3 and Destiny, I mean, that's not even a contest. No, it's not. No contest, huh? No contest whatsoever. Destiny is the game yeah. you go back to when you're done playing whatever is new. Exactly. I think, you know, yeah. it, it's always there. It's always going to be there. Yeah. It's available to download, but not happened yet. Well, I'm at least glad you got some game time in, bro. Oh, That's it feels good. good. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, how about you, Dirty Bombs? How you doing? Eh, I'm all right. You know, don't have to uh, multitask with an assignment tonight while we do this. So that, that's that's good. Um, I also got to play some games, but I also have more free time than Thaddeus. So yeah, that, I know, right? Um, uh, spent my day playing Destiny actually, and doing oh. that oh so sweet grind for strikes, and actually ended up getting myself up to three eighty four, and nice. to the oh sweet. so pain in the ass part of the Thorn Crucible party. Your favorite oh, weapon boy. thing. <sighs> Did you notice that there is there any way you get that to drop or it just randomly drops? It was random. I turned it in okay. a Shiro quest when it happened though, but okay. Yeah. It's random, but it, it is from turning in uh Shiro's bounties. Okay, okay. Well, how about you, sir? How's your week been? Uh I got my thorn. I didn't throw away the most useful gun in getting the thorn bounty finished. Mr. Dude, Atheon's it's epilogue. Three years old. What do you want from me? It's one slot. They told us that's one they slot. They told us they told us that Thorn wouldn't be making a comeback in year two. Oh, you believe in Bungie? Year three. You? And, no, hey, I will. They always <laughs> tell the truth. Always. <laughs> I actually <laughs> mostly kind of sort of vaguely, moderately believe that. It's just that then when they get their arm twisted by all the whiny little bitch ass tweens on the freaking forum saying, bring Thorn back, bring Thorn back. I'm not good without Thorn. That's what happens. <laughs> Who are those uh, guys? What'd you call them? Bitchy ass little tweens. <laughs> Well, Thorn's a mere shadow of its former self now. Exactly. That's why everybody in the chat was all like, it's funny that Dirty's going for Thorn. I am only going for Thorn to get the freaking book. Yeah, uh, it's one of the four that you need. the only reason. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get it, I know it's going to drop at 350. I'm going to scrap it immediately. Aw. Well, breaking my heart. It doesn't oh, mean God. anything that he scraps it. He can always go to the kiosk if he misses it that badly. Which I won't. Right. Yeah. Which you there want. You go. Uh, Speaking sure. of exotics, real quick, like skins or ornaments, sorry, for Bad Juju, if you have not heard, are actually coming with Festival of the Lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and they Red probably, Death. A couple others too, right? Well, yep, those are coming for is, Christmas. Yeah. Red Deaths is. Okay. There's Red Death. Uh, Thorn gets some. And yeah. 
one other is getting Christmas skins. Not Christmas themed, but coming around that time. Yeah. All I know yeah. is I've been I finally managed to finish Wretched Eye on Void Burn. <laughs> you know what that is? That's a big bag of nopes. It big is. bag of nopes. <laughs> Dude, I did the abomination heist this week with Void Burn. That is not fun. Yeah, <laughs> no. No, no, Oof. no. That's you see, another big bag of nopes. But I have to get a I have to get a key back because everyone was saying, Oh, make sure you've got a key for the wretched eye strike and I'm like, oh, okay, so I did the wretched eye strike and I used my key and then it was pointless, so Did you get the class item? I got a Titan mark that I infused into my warlock bond. I Very think nice. they're trying to get you to go for the sniper rifle that drops. The devil's dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add it. Scrapped it. Did I scrap it? Yeah. I don't remember. It's it's I a good one. Of them. It only holds three shots, but you yeah, know, it's I mean, good for PvE. It last week when it was solar brand, I'm like, crap, I don't have a solar sniper. And that was the first thing that drops. I'm like, eh, I'm gonna use it. Mm-hmm. And now it's void. So it's like, eh. I've got three devil's dawns, one of each element. I got super lucky in that way. Dang, dude. I did get that is super lucky. The old school pulse rifle, Aegis, uh, uh, Aegis of the Reef, from uh, oh, from Mister Varix. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I decided to try because I was like in the last bar of um, uh, his his reputation level thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, grab a few bounties, knock a few level forty ones out, and bing bang boom. I mean, yeah, sure enough, right at the end. Bang, bang, boom. Barracks and Petra are giving up to 390 gear in their packages, just like the factions. Uh, so, yeah, keep that's that why I was uh, doing that because I'm all like, yep. I was just kind of like, I'm tired of strikes right now. Let's go do something else to try and get packages. Yeah. Um, oh, another news I managed to get up to 386 by today. Dang. I don't know how y'all are doing that, man, because I'm stuck at like, I was stuck at 365 forever, and now I'm at 367. So, I don't know, dude, stuck so much, dude. I, I get no luck with Ingrams. Like, they all drop lower or at. Time, man, Crucible screws you over. I yeah. know. That's you my problem. You are not a fan of the grind of strikes, but you really have to do the grind of the strikes. Yeah. Well, I mean, even just leveling up your factions, just play the game, do your bounties, you know, Vanguard stuff, get your, uh, your faction class item on to increase that. Use your boosts when you do strikes and stuff like that. Hit up the patrols. I mean, it's a little bit different every day, so at least it's not super, super grindy like playing the same, what, four strikes day in and day out. Yep. Which is what it feels like. You, know? you have a plethora of modes of line always using it. That's true. That's true. Well, my week has been uh, not very eventful. I mean, Pretty much just playing a little bit of uh, Gears. Finally finished it, and that ending, oh my gosh, I can't wait well, to talk about it. we're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. 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 Gears, it was just, it was so epic. And, uh, of course, I played some Destiny, and I played some Overwatch. Played some Overwatch. That was, it was pretty fun, man. It was good to get back in Overwatch. But uh, Get any of those new yeah. skins? No, I, I, actually, yes, I did. I got a skin, but I can't remember who it was for. It was like, because you get one free loot pack mm. when you log in. And I can't remember who I got it for. I saw it wasn't that good. I saw a picture. No, it was kind of uh, okay. Yeah, I saw a picture circling on Twitter, and someone was like, "I don't know how the heck this happened, but someone got four legendary skins in a box." Dude, RNGs, man. Heck That's yeah, some serious like, RNGs. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So week's been kind of you know meh. meh. So it's 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 not been. Super eventful, but uh, if you guys could check out our website, we have so many stinking articles going up there right now. Mulehorngaming.com. Uh, you can check out some other cool podcasts, some other cool people at ninjapancake.com. We got lots of stuff like my morning coffee. You got a uh, bombshell jackets, a bunch of good casts over there. And if you guys don't know, check out bottlebreacher.com. You can get a super cool, like 50 cal real bullet made into a breacher for your beer. So it's pretty freaking sweet. They actually have like hand grenades and stuff like that too. What? It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. They have like hand grenades that are like their breachers. It's pretty freaking awesome. So it's a grenade but, uh, that opens a bottle too? I don't know, man. I, can, I just saw them up there and I was like, whoa, dude, I want to get one just because it's a grenade. <laughs> Is it a one time you see pull enough. the pin to open your beard and <laughs> run? You're it's done, the disposable yeah. opener. Yeah. yeah. Run! No more beer. So if you go to the. <laughs> yeah. So if you go to the website, use our code and you can get 10% off. It's all caps, Mulehorn, 10%. You can get 10% off. 
And if you want to help support the cast and all the cool stuff on our website, go to patreon.com forward slash Mulehorn Gaming. And you know what, guys? I just realized I've what? never actually told some of our listeners what actually Patreon does for us. So it's a it's a way for you to support the cast. Uh, we don't pocket any of the money. All of it's going directly back out to you guys. If you've seen all of our giveaways, like when we did a gears giveaway, we've done some pop giveaways. We've done uh, one guy got Skyrim, the new Skyrim that's coming out. So there's a lot of cool giveaways. We gave away a copy of rise of iron. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of the ways that we can kind of give back to you guys. And so we have three levels. You can give just for a buck. You can get into our uh, discord chat which is pretty cool. You get to chat with all of us mules and all the other patrons that are in there. Shenanigans the guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get access to our monthly vid letter. where we give you all the nitty gritties of uh mulehorngaming.com. What's going on with that. Um, and it is a, just a monthly occurring payment, you know, so for a buck, you can get all that. If you do five bucks, you can get all of that other stuff. Plus, we will give you access to our pre podcast chat. So before we start recording like tonight, you can get in and you can hear all the shenanigans and it's pretty fun. <laughs> also yeah. a custom Twitter banner made by dirty bombs. What? That's right. That's right. That's actually. Yeah. Oh, who is that's, Who's dirty bombs? Cause I thought we had a guy called dirty Bob bombs. That's weird. dirty Bob bombs. Well, you know, I haven't changed my Twitter handle. So suck a D. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Cause nice. I doubt you would remember that. <laughs> yeah yeah so and so the the 10 bucks is dirty said you can get all of that plus a custom avatar for your twitter or facebook page so yeah and you get a shout out on our on our patreon uh spot and on our website as an official supporter so yeah it's pretty pretty sweet pretty sweet but let's go ahead and send it over to dirty bombs for rapid fire news Rapid Fire News. Red Dead Redemption 2 had its trailer drop. Phil Spencer commented on Twitter about a possibility of having original Xbox games work on the Xbox One. Nintendo has revealed its new Nintendo Switch. Star Wars Ultimate Edition has been revealed from EA. The Ultimate Edition is priced at $39.99 on Amazon and will include the original game plus all the DLC. Overwatch had their Halloween update, yet fans are, however, are still upset that the tease of Sombra continues to be dragged out. Destiny had an update to fix light level capping and dropped the new hard mode for the raid. And Rocket League has dropped some Halloween content that will be accessible until November 1st. That was rapid fire news. Get on back to Shenanigan. So, <laughs> guys podcast tonight we get we're going to talk a little bit of news and kind of rumorish about uh phil spencer saying some stuff about og xbox games that might become backwards compatible for xbox one what? Uh, red oh, dead 2 we gotta yeah. talk about that nintendo switch and of course gears of war 4 and then we'll finish it up with a little word on the tweet so uh just real quick on the uh og xbox games there was a question asked to phil spencer and um, there it goes. It says, I love this is from a guy on Twitter and he's, he's uh, tweeting to Phil Spencer. And he says, I love the backwards compatibility of 360 titles. Is it ever possible? We'll see original Xbox backwards compatibility. And Spencer actually said, we haven't ruled it out, but we aren't working on it right now. I'd like to find time to do it. So that guys has me super excited because he's not ruling it out. He's not saying Xbox won't work on it but they would like to, if they can find time. So dude. So you're dude. saying there's still a chance. There's so still, you're saying there's a chance, <laughs> a chance. There's a chance. And if it happens, I just want to ask you guys, would you take advantage of it? Would you play any old school Xbox games? Absolutely. Republic Maybe. commando. Maybe Republic yeah. commando. Dude. I mean, my question is, will I be able to use Xbox one discs? Because I've got a pretty few sitting around. Yeah, yeah, I, I would assume you know. so for backwards compatible. I don't want to have to buy all these things all over again like Nintendo makes you do. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Of course, I know it's pretty impossible to get a digital copy authorized in your account from buying a cartridge in 1992. <laughs> True, <laughs> yeah. it's understandable. True. But True. come on, I mean, just let us use the disc. Yeah, let us use the disc. Come on, do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I got, I got Oblivion. I've got Morrowind. 
you know, not Oblivion, Oblivion with 360. I got Morrowind. You know, I've got Star Wars games. Yeah. Like, I could play Kodor. <sighs> oh, there you go. Yeah. I could if Thaddeus gave me my copy back. No, that's Kodor 2, <laughs> not Kodor 1. Uh, Let's still, get it right. Still. Semantics. Semantics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think I would take advantage of it because um, the first thing I thought of was, I mean, I don't have it anymore, but I would go and find it. Jade Empire, Kortor, Advent Rising, mm-hmm. Republic Commando. Like those are four games right there that I can spout off the top of my head that I know I would jump back in and play. Yeah. You know. What do you think is realistically the possibility of of this actually happening? I mean... It was just a tweet, right, or an email yeah. interaction. You didn't hear him say like, "Oh yeah, yeah." If we have time, <laughs> like you don't know that his tone of voice or his tone of tweet. Yeah, is rather tweet. There's no tone <laughs> in tweeting. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. that's pretty awesome that he even said he, they would like to do it, and they haven't ruled it out. But they, mm-hmm. it's just the possibility of it's probably pretty slim because they're not going to have enough time with Scorpio and stuff like that. But I don't know, man. I mean. To me, it's like, hey, yeah, you know what? I would like you to sell, like to sell you all those games again. Yeah, they, I'd like to do that. They totally should, dude. They would make so much money with that, especially like Republic Commando would end up being like eighty bucks, you know, because everybody would want it. I doubt that. Not for eighty bucks. That's not how games work. No. Supply and demand. They wouldn't charge twenty dollars more than a game is now, just because it's backwards compatible, dude. Well, yeah, I don't know if it'd be digital. Put ideas in Phil's head. I don't know if it'd be digital, but I paid nine ninety nine. Yeah, it would have to be digital because not many or any game shops, unless they're operating in like yesteryear, would even have them anymore. Dude, I got three game shops in my area that have old school games like that. What? I saw Republic Commando the other day, and I was like, I'd really pick that up if I had my OG Xbox, but I don't. You know? I think Xbox and PS2 games and, you know, that, that stuff's not as highly coveted as, like, the older NES, SNES, yeah. Genesis right. games, you know? It's not they're, quite vintage. It's almost there. Right. They're not vintage. They're just old shit. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, right? Yeah. Like we need to wait a little longer. <laughs> wait till There's less 50. nostalgia about- att- attached to it. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the year when all the 360 games, you know, that require online or DRM, you can't play them anymore. Fortunately, most original Xbox games should run just fine offline. Yeah, yeah. So, what about you, uh, Dirty? Would you take advantage of that? Would you play any old school, old G Xbox games on the Xbox One? Probably, but I wouldn't know what because I didn't have an original Xbox. I had a PlayStation 2 as my first console, so that's what I stuck with. Oh, yeah. But uh, I did too. Well, for that generation. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I didn't have a 360 until I was in college. Yeah. Dang, man. So, wow. Ooh, college boy. I go to college. I go to college. Mm. Technically, college it's my boy. second and a half time going to college. Second and a half. Yeah. <laughs> we won't discuss the half. No, well, the half was a. Uh, I, I give zero fucks. I, I didn't give enough of a shit to try because I was basically being forced by a crazy ex girlfriend to go for a program I didn't want to do. Is that why you hate friends? No. <laughs> okay. No. I hate friends because friends is annoying. All right. Yeah. And the All cast right. is Fair annoying. enough. Fine. Fine, Just fine dirty. Beastie boys and country music. I've. I've always thought it was a mistake to make people go you know to do the most important segment of learning in their lives when they're 18 or 19 to 20 you know 2 to 26 like yep what a terrible time to be making decisions that impact the rest of your life yeah terrible <laughs> you should be able to just take a decade off then then go to college it's terrible you know Terrible. Terrible. After after you've wisened up and the world has gotten a chance to humble your ass a little bit, a little bit. We're getting we're getting a little off a little topic bit. here, but if I could go back, anyway. I would go <laughs> to a smaller school first, then bigger school. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So moving on, Red Dead Redemption Two. Hell's yeah! I just want to know that is. Do you even have any pants left, or did you? They just explode nope. as they came off. This flew <laughs> off. <laughs> So you're the huge Red Dead Redemption fan, man. So I want to get the first thoughts from you. What did you think when you saw that trailer? Um, I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I was like, 
Oh, that's it. I want more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh first impression, it looked like the it looks like the open world's pretty pretty huge and beautiful. Yeah. I don't know if that's, you know, in game footage or engine footage or, you know, straight cinematic. I don't know, but it looked amazing. But they really didn't show much. It's more of a teaser than anything. But um I have a feeling it's going to be the prequel to John Marston's, uh, you know, adventure that's already been out. So yeah, we shall see. And in, in a truly immersive online gaming experience after they've already, you know, secured Red Dead Online. Yeah, man, there's so much possibilities. We have no idea what's going to be, but it's going to be huge. Man, that's what I was thinking. That's what she said. Yeah, that was that was good, dirty. That was a good. That's what she said there. Yeah. I apologize. That's what she said. Indeed. I thought it looked awesome too. It it looked, I mean, it was like eye candy. It looked so good. And I want to ask you guys what your thoughts are too. What do you think will happen with this immersive multiplayer, like idea that they're throwing out there that this could be a huge multiplayer open world. Do you think it's going to be dark zone 2.0? Hope not. I think it'd be more, you know, GTA style, obviously. You think so? Well, I yeah. Mean, I mean, because they did GTA, but. If they but ran the Dark Zone like they ran GTA Online, I'd probably, maybe, have played it a couple months longer. Yeah. You know, mm, where they take all true. the assholes and put them on their own server. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dick bag server. The so dick bag <laughs> server. Exactly. Dick bag <laughs> server. Yeah. DBS. See, I never nice. played Grand Theft Auto. I know. Don't hang me, but. What's wrong Wait, with you? None of them? I've never played any of them. How have you never what? played a GTA? They just didn't look like I would want to play them, so I never did. What do you mean they wouldn't? Uh, look? What? Do you like real life? Because they're basically <laughs> a life sim, and you can do whatever you want. I don't want to play a sim, though. Like, it's, Okay, it's not a sim, but I mean, it's it's an open world game. Like, it's one of the first real open world games. It, it must have been the controls. They they surely had to anticipate it <laughs> Busting be the balls over here. <laughs> are we in the Matrix? Are we are we in a fucking Vex simulation right now? <laughs> no, is dude. this real life? I never I never played Grand Theft Auto. I know it's horrible. Dude, that is ins- okay. That's like a gamer rite of passage. It just like true. you got to play one of them. I just never looked like I wanted to play it cuz I was so sucked into like Star Wars games and you like Red Dead? It's like Star Wars on Earth, man. Red Dead's not bad. I mean, it's not my like. Ooh, I gotta go home and play Red Dead Redemption. But uh, you like Skyrim, like where Skyrim is dragons and wizards. Yes. And shit. Yes. Red Dead is cowboys. GTA is modern. See, and that's just not entertaining to me. I don't want real modern life. I want to um, want to go into some but fantasy. You get to world. run people over. I don't yeah, know it's not like blow up helicopters. <laughs> I can it's do that. Ever, real that rage ever play Carmageddon? Crazy <laughs> things. I mean, come on. Have you seen the gifts that come out of GTA Five? Oh my god, dude! Like it is that is not real life. Have you seen the Mythbuster videos world, that come from that? I'm gonna get it now Just after this guy stunts. Oh, <laughs> well, you need to. You should. Yeah. And GTA I mean, I don't have GTA is, Five. I'd love to, but I did play GTA Four and Three. Yeah. So I think I played Three and Four. I never did Five though. Five is Just, good because you switch between three different main characters. Yeah. And it has GTA Online, which is, you know, it, it, I, I had it on 360. And so I never got to actually experience the heists. Uh, that took a long time. That was a big deal. You can do heists in the game where you plan out these these involved missions and you set roles for uh, the different characters. You can switch between them. And then they were like, oh, we're going to bring heists into multiplayer, which would basically be like, uh, I don't mm-hmm. know, a raid, you know, yeah. sort of. Where, okay, you're going to be the driver, you're going to be this guy, you're going to sneak in the back, I'll bust in the front, you know, and you can, you go to your hideout and organize the plans and everything, and then you go rob a joint or go kill some guys, whatever. I never got to play that because it took them like a year to figure it out. And now apparently GTA Online is awesome, but I don't have it for Xbox One because I played it on 360. But Mule, you should definitely play it. Man. I'm going to have to put it on the backlog. The backlog games. No. no. Do it now. Yeah. I still have to finish Witcher, man. I barely got like a quarter. You're never going to finish Witcher. I know, but I got like a, a quarter finish, of the way. I want to play that first. So. Well, you never finished Skyrim. I just don't think we can trust him. 
I want to play Skyrim. I want to play Witcher, but Mass Effect's coming out. I just get so sidetracked, man. It's just like that's yeah, what GTA tell. is for. You're you're talking about going in Skyrim and you're trying to do the the mission that takes at best like four hours to complete and. Oh, here's a cave, and you're sidetracked for two hours. That's GTA, also. See, I'm you're worried like, about that, though. If I, I'm going to mow down fools in in this Corvette for two hours now. See, if Red like, Dead's like that, I may never come up for air. It'll be like, where's Wade? He hasn't you'll, been. You'll have all plenty week. time to to attack most of it before Mass Effect comes. Yeah, yeah. You'll get a, a very good feel for the game before Mass Effect comes. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. See, the one thing I remember, I do remember about Red Dead Redemption is my roommates played the hell out of it back when I was in my roommate days, roommate having days. And I remember an achievement that you got when you killed every last buffalo. <laughs> buffalo? <laughs> the extinction of the buffalo. So you could actually make them go extinct. When you killed a buffalo, it did not respawn. So the more you killed, they eventually would disappear like real life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you made the buffalo go extinct. Actually. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy, but eh, it's sad, but a little funny. So what's your thoughts, T, since you're the expert on Red Dead? Do you, what do you think it'll be like? Uh, pretty much what I said earlier. <laughs> um, do you I think mean, it's going to be like gonna, Grand Theft Auto, or you think you're going to be just everyone thrown into one server? Well, it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to... Well, I hope they have the separate servers for one. Um, so when I, when I played the multiplayer version for Red Dead, it was fun, um, you know, being able to roll up with, you know, some other gamer tag that I saw in there where we're basically raiding a, uh, a stronghold. But then you have another, another Smojo who rolls up on you and it's like, boom, shoots you and keeps on riding. We're like, oh, come on. So it's, it's it kind of, I don't know, it feeds both sides of it. Yeah. But if they have the, you know, the dick bag server, then I think <laughs> they'll definitely have the, uh, <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be fun to play for sure. Yeah. The big but, bag uh, notes. I'm curious. Big bang notes, but if it's as big as open world as some of the uh, open world games are now, I mean, there's so many possibilities for it to be awesome. Yeah. Did anybody see when they're saying it may come out? I, I think fall I saw 17. it. Fall? Okay. Fall yeah. 17. That'll at least leave me a little time with Mass Effect to, <laughs> you know, because Mass Effect comes out in March. So, like that thing is going to leave your disc tray. It probably won't ever. It's true. I'm going to do digital, nope. man. Ain't getting no discs. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Unless they have some up. kind I, of... I like, buy mostly digital, too. <laughs> Would you ever trade it in? Probably not. Nope. I still have one through three right here. But uh, yeah. I, I would only do physical unless there's some cool stuff you can get with it, like I did with Star Wars Battlefront, where I got a, a sweet poster. So, Dude, you know there will be. It'll be better than a poster. It's probably going to be a big-ass figurine. Some some certificate, some booklet with art and stuff in it. It's going to cost like four hundred bucks. Yep, yep. I would you know love all. I would be on all of that. If they had a working <laughs> Omni tool, I'd take it. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as would anyone. <laughs> yeah. So, so pushing. Give me that beer. It's like the force, right? Yeah, right. Pretty much. You need a bottle opener. Here's my Omni tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I just want to get your initial thoughts. The trailer dropped today, which is Thursday, the twentieth. So, uh, what were you guys' initial thoughts when you saw everything? Was it was it ooh man, or was it eh, or was it yeah, I'm buying immediately? Kind of. What were you thinking? I know Circus got some words on this because I mean, y'all blew up chat today. Oh my god. We had a few words. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> Did you? The whole extended family of the Mule Pack and our, our team oh of writers God. were I all couldn't follow just it. frenetic with follow. their <laughs> highly varying opinions <laughs> yeah. on the Nintendo Switch. I got a couple things I guess I could say about it. First off, it's a console and it's a handheld. It's both. Question is, how good is the gaming when it's a handheld? Does it downscale? That's the question. Sub question, isn't that okay because it's going to be a little screen? Does it matter if it goes down to 1080 or 720 on that little ass screen? Because some people were saying that's maybe kind of an issue for them if, if it can't handle it. The big problem is if it doesn't upscale when it's plugged into the dock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we saw the guy playing Skyrim at home 
and he was also playing it on his handheld. Mm-hmm. And he just slides the thing into the console dock and slides it out, and it's seamless. It pops up on the TV, it pops up on the little screen. So my question is, what version of Skyrim is this thing running? Is this going to be like the 360 era Skyrim, or is it going to be the HD remastered version of Skyrim? I mean, what kind of graphics can it handle? We don't have any specs yet, but after doing a little bit of reading, I did discover that NVIDIA is making a custom chip that's going to ship inside of these things. And it's called the NVIDIA Tegra chip, and this is a chip that's basically an integrated processor graphic processing unit it's it's kind of like an integrated chip that basically is a computer in a in a little space it's designed for tablets oh. phones uh all in one pcs is uh, it the same one that was in the note 7 oh dang i'm oh, kidding oh, oh, the, the uh the explode the 7 bombery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully not yeah so i was saying earlier the new nintendo comes with the built-in bob bomb like dirty bomb but bomb? no no it I was looking at the stats, and I think it should be comparable at least to what the Xbox One can do, or better, because there are models of the Tegra already out in other products, right? Yeah. And they're making a custom one for the Nintendo Switch, so we have to wait and see what kind of capabilities the thing is going to have. But it uses cartridges, guys. Do you think that's a step backwards, or are you into this? Are you are you like, yeah, my kid won't leave thumbprints on a cartridge because that won't matter? Or why isn't it all digital? Like, what's the deal? What do you think? Well, I think it'd be great for the fact that it, the, the unit could very well be portable a lot. Having a disc and, you know, I don't know, most consoles, they don't recommend you moving with a disc in there. That's true. Yeah. Um, also, you mentioned the thumbprint scratching and changing mm-hmm. games while on the fly. It'll be easier to have you know your your game library or a, a portion of a game library on you, on your person or your you know whatever thing you're carrying it in mm-hmm. in this miniature disc, a miniature uh, com cartridge form versus a disc. Digital would be a good idea. That'd be great. They'll actually, have digital download as well. Maybe that was an external hard drive. Well, maybe not. I think it was a I disc mean, that showed on the, on the. It was a cartridge that showed on the video. Is it gonna be the same type of a cartridge or the same size or compatible with the 3DS? Because if hey. this thing is backwards compatible yeah. with the DS carts, uh, I'm sold. Because that means it looked like it. Pretty genius. It looks a lot like it. it. So you can play yeah. both. Both games, like the DS games? Because then I'll be playing Pokemon, and it'll be like your battery is dying, because it always does, because I'll play it for like six hours, and then I'll plug it into the TV, and then my family has to suffer watching me play Pokemon. (laughs) It'll be amazing. Yeah. Well, I think the cartridge idea is actually the best, because nostalgia. And honestly, guys, like I felt a little meh about it. Um, it (laughs) It looked really cool, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, this is... I didn't feel like it was I was their target audience. I don't know. I just didn't feel like I probably was. Probably not. And um, I know people my age will probably buy it because they'll be like, oh, my kids got to experience what I experienced as a kid. So they're going to buy it and so their kids can have it. You know, I mean, that's the whole reason why I'm going to get the NES Mini because it has mm-hmm. all the games I grew up playing and I want my son mm-hmm. to experience those games. So yeah, smart, marketing, smart marketing, smart um, marketing. I don't know if I'll, I like the price tag that it's probably going to have because it is a quote unquote console, but well, we me, don't know what it's going to be yet. That's true. Yeah. But to me, it's like, why would I want to buy a Nintendo switch when I have my phone? You know, I can well, presumably, um, apples and oranges. Number one, it should run better stuff than your phone does currently. Uh, if it's running Skyrim, especially if it's running the, the remastered Skyrim that can give us kind of an example of what it's capable of doing. Yeah. Besides that, your phone doesn't have the plethora of Nintendo IPs, Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Mega Man. I mean, all the games, freaking Metroid, all the games that have been on Nintendo 
are impossible to play anywhere else, basically. I can get that on the NES Mini it's coming, though. All those games are going to be preloaded. Yeah, yeah, but you won't be able to get more games for it. And if you're happy with all the games that are on that, then I think that's the right buy for you. Yeah. You know? But this is going to have a new Mario game, new Zelda that we've seen, new other games, and this new Mario looked a little bit like Mario 64. So it's it's got my... My sense is tingling a little bit. I'm like, ooh. ooh. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, with all the games they've previewed and games I'm sure will come out as well, uh, you have uh, multiple um, multiple choices of peripherals. Peripherals that, that come with, you know, yeah. p- plugging your, the base unit on your console, uh, playing it handheld, um, playing it on your, on your table with um, two players where each person has one controller. Right. And then they showed, ways. yeah. Yep. And then they showed a legit controller that you can sync up with it. I think it's, you know, an, an extra an extra purchase, obviously. Oh, oh. Yes, that was the Pro Controller. That was the Pro Controller. And yep. which which major manufacturer did they pretty much carbon copy when designing their controller? <laughs> you look like a lot like Microsoft. Xbox. Looks yep. a hell of a lot like an Xbox controller. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, everyone who's been wanting an external controller for NES or any Nintendo product has a legit one to play with. Because that'd be me too. I mean, those little small little things was, was kind of weird. No D pad or it could be a D pad reverse flipped, whatever. But you're having an Xbox, you're a D pad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to have an Xbox like controller to play in that, that'd be good for me. I like that too. I like that a lot. And that the basically on the handheld on the sides of it are kind of smaller iterations of yeah. your left analog stick and buttons, right analog stick and buttons, and those slide off, turn sideways, and then you've got two controllers with an analog stick and a couple of buttons on it for yep. more s- relatively simple inputs yeah. for games, which Nintendo right. has always pretty much excelled at. I mean, they rocked the world with two buttons. Come on. Oh, right? yeah. Am I right? Am I right? Or, so I think we got to pay attention to the price point. We got to pay attention to the kind of graphics this thing's going to support. And I don't mean that Nintendo has to rock the boat. It doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. They never did. They never have. I think look at the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Color, DS. None of these consoles could shake a stick at equivalent graphics on other consoles at the time that they were released ever yeah they're handheld they had lesser graphics but arguably some people would say more fun and the portability is a big factor i mean mule you said you're maybe not the target audience for this i think i am because i grew up playing pokemon right i mean i'm 29 i was in i think fifth sixth grade when pokemon red and blue hit the states okay so formative years i hit it hard dude and to this day i'm not embarrassed to take the 3ds to the grocery store to go out to eat to go run an errand oh we need to drive here okay hold on yeah i'm charged all right (laughs) i'm getting my pokemon on i I don't care yeah i'm a grown-ass man who's gonna make fun of me six foot two me for playing pokemon out in public yeah no one yeah because it it's america yeah, America. you can do whatever you want. America, <laughs> America. Yeah. So I'm, I'm totally excited. Yeah. Other question: Some games are probably going to require Wi-Fi. So the viability of picking up Skyrim and walking out the door with it, pretty good. But online games, maybe not so much the case. Yeah. And battery life. Yep. So this Nvidia Tegra chip is really. Uh, I would assume at least what it's been designed to do so far is to run in mobile devices, giving it high power efficiency. Yeah. Um, but you're also going to probably be pushing it running games like these. So if it runs for two hours and dies, that's a problem. Yeah. But if you can squeeze out four, hell, I mean, six, eight hours out of the thing, I, I think that's gold. I think it'll sell like hotcakes as long as it's, 250 300 or less oh it'll you sell because it's like nintendo well, it's mobile yeah yeah but yeah i mean obviously it won't suck the battery out when it's in the dock i just kind of wonder man because right. everyone was pretty hyped up when we originally was announced if you can think back to when we was announced and everyone's like oh my gosh this looks so awesome it looks so amazing but maybe it was just me but it never really like i had a wii 
Because everyone had a Wii, yeah. but then I right. sold it back. <laughs> everyone, wait, wait, rewind five seconds. What did you said? Everyone because it's Nintendo, man. You're gonna buy it for the nostalgia. Everyone gave them money, is what you said. Yeah. It was a, mm-hmm. it was a success. It's like Pokemon all over again. Freaking nursing homes have <laughs> Wiis because they can sit in a chair and bowl. <laughs> Dude, kids play Wii. Your wife and kids play Mario Party with you, even if they don't game. Yeah. You know, it's the perfect casual system. Yeah. And there are real gamers games on Wii. I mean, Smash Bros. Just done. All right. Doesn't get more hardcore than Smash Bros. Honestly, on Nintendo. But is that the audience this time around? I think Nintendo's playing. They're sticking to their guns. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, look, here is a probably modest, modestly powered, as far as graphics go, console and a modestly priced console, hopefully. And as long mm-hmm. as they can hit that stru- that sweet spot, I don't see any reason why this won't blow up, man, especially yeah. with some of the partners they've hooked up with. They released a big picture yeah. showing all the partners they're they're working with, which go which dude run runs across the board from EA to Activision, to Ubisoft, to, uh, I want to say Epic, or not Epic. Uh, yeah, Epic was on there. Unreal Engine, at least, was on there. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that doesn't mean we're going to see Mobile Destiny, necessarily, but Activision, I mean, that's that's kind of neat. COD, here we come. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's just nice that they've already got endorsements, that there are devs and publishers out there who are like, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're releasing mid generation. Yeah, you're Nintendo, spotty at best with with consistency, but they're backing this thing. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I kind of think that they're. Sorry, I was gonna no, say, no, I kind of think they're gonna like make these games specifically for it. Like they're not gonna release, con- you know, console wide. They're like, oh, it's on the Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. No, because then they have to reformat the entire motherfucking game to go from a cartridge to a disc. And that's probably more costly for the company and Mm. probably pretty inconvenient. Yeah. Well, I don't know what all would be required to do that, but I do know we saw Skyrim. Now, depending on if that's the new one or the 360 one, that at least means that they can port games for this thing. And if it sells and games that you've never played in a portable way before, that now you can, they will sell. We bought Ocarina of Time again a few months back to play on 3DS, and it's f***ing awesome because I can play it at a restaurant, you know? Oh, hold on, I'm beating the Deku tree right now. I'd like fries <laughs> with that, yes. <laughs> you know? Welcome to Internet Burger, how can I take your order? Uh, give me a minute, um, I'm beating a boss. Yeah. Just hang on. Yeah, Queen Goma, Yeah, animal style. You want Queen Goma supersized? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Master Quest. I mean, that, that, that's just like a cool idea. That? Nintendo has always had this sort of culture surrounding it that I think, at least for me in America, in Texas, I don't live in a walking city. I'm, I'm not bumping into people and getting their street passes for their 3DS all the time. You know, I'm not making friends on Pokemon all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm sure people who walk around in Japan and you've got like 15 people around you maybe that are playing Pokemon and you're like, oh, here's a friend. Here's a friend. Here's a friend. Here, I, I don't have that. Like I, I met you guys online, and we don't even live near each other, really. You know what I mean? Because so, Texas is big. Texas is big. Yes, but that's what I call it. Wi-Fi <laughs> capability on this thing, and hopefully them embracing the new kind of esports and Wi-Fi connected culture. Uh, they they showed Splatoon being a big deal. Uh, they show these people plugging mm-hmm. in their Nintendo Switches at an e-games tournament. So it looks like Nintendo is actually, we, we didn't think it would happen, but they're actually bucking up. Bucking up, kiddo. You know, they're bucking up, man. Like, like they're getting, they're fighting. They're trying to remain relevant, yeah. I think, with, the, with this one. Yeah. So if the specs don't, don't please people, it, it could be a serious atom bomb for these guys. But... I, I think this could really dig them out of whatever proverbial hole you can imagine they've been in for a while if it does well. Yeah. I hope it does well just because I like Nintendo. But uh, I don't know if I'll be buying it. It looks really interesting, though. Like, 
there's a lot of things that I see a lot of You're people. You're just a big bucket of meh. I'm a big bucket of meh. There, I'm just saying, yeah, like, I think there's a lot of reasons people will pick it up. You know, I'm probably not one of those, but I, I mean, I can see it. There's going to be a lot of people are going to really love it because it's Nintendo and Nintendo's freaking awesome. So we just need more I mean, details. Every, yeah. Yeah. Every one of my Nintendo purchases literally has been an impulse buy. I impulse bought a Wii. Mm-hmm. I impulse bought the original 3DS. Or not 3DS, sorry, DS. I impulse bought my last 3DS to which I sold for my Xbox One because I never ended up playing it. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, yeah, this thing looks kind of neat. And I think if it actually, I think we mentioned this, in, or at least I mentioned it in chat, if it actually had like a tablet capability along with being a mobile console thing, Ooh. I would literally, I would get one yeah. solely for that function because I hate my iPad. My iPad is old and it's an iPad. So if I can have, and the only thing I use it for is Spotify when I'm at school. So, yeah. so if I can actually have a mobile device that doubles as a tablet and as a gaming thing, I'm on board. That would I doubt it'll be that epic. way. Yeah. It would be cool they, though, bud. Okay. How would they not have like Netflix and Voodoo and, and Crackle and stuff like that on it? I mean, that's, I that's kind of the standard. If it doesn't, that's. That pretty much. I mean, if they got Netflix, they got Spotify, they got like Google apps, like Gmail and whatnot, and YouTube, and (laughs) games, and you can listen to Spotify while beating Skyrim. I didn't want to listen to Spotify while I was doing that to begin with because Skyrim soundtrack is amazing to begin with. But (laughs) true, not knocking Skyrim soundtrack. I'm just saying, for an example, yeah, you know, I suppose, yeah, that that, yeah, Yeah. sign me up, dude. Yeah, it's got potential. It's got potential. I will say yes, that. And honestly, potential. if it hope, if it shapes up the way I want it to, which I don't know if it will, I will definitely get one. Yeah. But we will see. Yeah. So, yeah. What were you gonna say? Go ahead. I was gonna say another thing that that Nintendo tends to do is release multiple iterations of everything. Everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We got a 3ds. We got a 3ds XL. We got a dumb stupid 2DS because the 3DS runs games that the normal DS won't, but some people didn't want the 3DS because oh, my kid's eyes. Well, turn, turn it the off. 3D off. <laughs> uh, it's a Switch. Uh, okay, well, here's a <laughs> oh, flat God, one. Did. You know? Yeah. Th- there's always multiple versions, so will there be a Switch Elite that runs 4K in the future if this one doesn't? Maybe. You know, we, we we don't know. I mean, I think Nintendo, if they do anything well, is surprise us for better or worse. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's going to wait and see. So moving forward, Gears of War 4. Dudes. Dudes, dudes, dudes. Okay. So it's a happy dirty. I, I have to, you know, happy if, dirty. You're, if happy. you're listening and you haven't finished Gears of War, you're probably going to skip ahead this part because we're going to go spoilers everywhere. So yep. you've had plenty of time to complete the campaign. So we can't stop. And I got to say, no, yes, we won't stop. <laughs> that last chapter of Gears was just flat out epic. Like I was sitting here playing, yeah. and I was like in a party chat. With Cheesemo and uh, Scuba Steve from Nerd Food and a couple other guys, and they're like, "Oh, oh, he's getting to that part. You can tell because I get real quiet, and then I'd be like, oh, oh, I blew that up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at that! You know, because this is so cool. Like when you got in the mech, oh, dude, and yeah, I was, what a mech that was! When I was blowing up everything, I was like just sitting here going, oh, 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 oh my gosh, so." Here's one thing I noticed with with the mech mission that honestly kind of irritated me just a tiny bit for consistency purposes. Um, you've got this literal staple gun, yeah, yes, that yeah can't pop a fucking Swarmax blister, but when you fight one in the in the room when the first time you come across it, any power weapon will do. Like I I took a long shot to one and popped it in one shot. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> That kind of bugged me a little bit. I just used the rockets and told well, the yeah. old men to shoot him down every time I saw him. Yeah, that's what I did too. I was blowing everything up with the rockets. Yeah. But that last, the boss fight was kind of confusing at first. I'm like, I can't move forward. It was cool. What the it fuck? was cool, right? It was like, well, you tell me to get out. to that spot, and I can't get to that spot because whatever the hell's keeping me here is keeping me here. Yeah. 
And then I died. I'm like, oh. Bitch, you shoot, died shoot, on the bus? Oh, I wish well. there was more stuff like that in the game. Like, the original Swarmak fight is basically got, like, raid mechanics in there. Yeah. You know, where you have to activate an object. You have a time limit. Shoot a specific place. It's like an old school boss. And then the final boss is kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. You know? The final boss was easy as shit, though. But I loved it. I, I mean, once you figure Even out on hardcore, the it wind was thing, it's, it's relatively easy to, you know, mechanics and everything. But yeah. I think at that point, they're kind of just rewarding you. Yeah. Right? Like that whole mech chapter that and it was the just final joyful boss. glee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Con- congratulations. You basically beat the game now. Blow shit up. <laughs> Dude, I blew myself up the first time I got in the mech when they uh, <laughs> ran me through the uh, tutorial for the airstrikes because it was when the uh, carrier <laughs> opened up. I'm like, carrier! I'm like, oh, I got this shit. Oh. <laughs> I targeted one of those, one of the things, and it flew straight at oh, me, and I, yep. I air struck yep. myself. Oh, that's hilarious! Like, Don't, yeah, damn it, yeah, that's funny. So, Mule, when you saw the helicopter show up, or not the helicopter, when you saw the mechs walk up and who climbed out of them, you've played Gears two, but not three, right? Yeah. So you recognized the characters. Yeah, I, I recognized Coltrane two and three. yeah. So Baird. Baird. Yeah. What? But she didn't know Sam. Probably didn't know Sam because she was just in three, right? I knew yep. of her because I'd seen her, but I didn't know her super well. So, yeah. Three. Well, I know the anyway. story, but yeah. I well, Baird, go play Baird knows man. her super well. Yeah. Well, if if anything, they were married. Just say goodbye to Dom properly, man. Yeah. Because you got to play three. Yeah. It's good. I mean, I've seen and it with Dom. The You're my boy, Dom. Three. A lot of the story in three is what makes the weird little thing we saw at the end of the game so peculiar. Yes, yes. I think that was pretty interesting, I, man. Oh, man. I want to hear some of y'all's theories and what y'all think oh. is going on <laughs> with Circuit and I got the Hive Queen, <laughs> and you know, let's let's hear it, okay, guys. First of all, first of all, when it ended where it did, I was sad. And upset <laughs> at the same time. I'm like, what That's the it? F- what? How does it end there? <laughs> Cliffhangers much? Thanks. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> but as soon as that means gears five. Yeah. Exactly. That's what that means. Which is fine with me. But still, like it's like it was just so abrupt. Because Marcus is all like, oh come on, we gotta fight out of here. I'm like, oh yeah, we ain't done yet. And then it ended. I'm like, you f- <laughs> anticlimactic for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But hold on. They do not get marks for the presentation, but the story, the lore at the end, mm-hmm. the way it integrates, yeah, and it's 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 feasible based on what Reyna tells Kate about right at the very end. Yeah, that it belonged to her grandmother, which leads you to assume what that well nothing Raina's exactly because you didn't play the damn game. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yes, but no, Kate's mother, grandmother. Yep. Is Queen Mira? Yeah, that's that's the theory. So do, is Queen Mira? From, it's a very working theory and it's yeah, very plausible. It makes sense. And it, it it if it's not, then they can go f- themselves because they <laughs> just totally squandered an entire opportunity to make that even more interesting. So do you think that's Queen? Obviously, what they alluded to. Well, obviously, but if 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 you think Marcus has anything to do with that, because they were kind of uh, at least he on knew. negotiating. He terms. knew some. Sh- man. Yeah, he 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 kept quiet. He did not tell Kate something before earlier in the story. Yep. He's and like, we got to go find your mom. You need closure on this. And he was like, he changed his tune pretty quick. He's all like, no man, she dead. Let's go. Let's go somewhere else. No, she's dead. Let's go. No, she's dead. Let's go. Fine. F- you, you win. Yeah. Well, I think he, he knew there's nothing we can do about it, but Kate needed to see her gone, and maybe it's better that she unplugged her. Well, probably. My question yeah, is, why thing. do they look so humanoid? Like, I knew the queen looked humanoid, kind of. And uh, well, presumably we, she was. Yeah. So, do you think they're just they uh, basically all those guys are just Sarens? Well, the way that Circuit and I speculated afterwards is that clearly we see the swarm take humans right yeah put them in pods and out come the swarm 
yeah. the swarm, the longer they're alive, become more evolved. Yep. So I proposed to him a cyclical type of thing that humans become swarm, swarm become locust, it, so forth and so on. It's a chicken and egg situation because we know huh. that the locusts have been under the surface of Sarah for a long time, like before humans, not humans, Sarans recorded history, really. They are humans, though. Huh? They are humans, though. They refer to themselves as, as humanity, I guess. Uh, Mira actually does. Okay. So I've recently yeah. started playing Gears 2, and she's all like, the humans of Sera. I'm like, right. Mm, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what? They, they could be ex-Earthlings, or this could be a long time ago in a galaxy far, far, far away. Far away. Yeah. Or a long time in the future in a galaxy far, far away. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, they look enough like humans. They're really, really bulked out and squatty because of a higher gravity there. Evolution could handle that simply, over, but over a long period of time. So these people clearly aren't connected to Earth at all. No. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's not what they're about. But are humans locust yeah had they did they have something happen to them where you know you had a couple humans transform into locust and then procreate and then go underground and then years and years and years and years and years later they're starting to get sick and start climbing out onto the surface and then you got gears one or did locust leave climb to the surface and eventually turn into humans hmm I mean, it could go either way. We're getting pretty far fetched at this point, but at the it's very least, man. like Dirty said, we do know there were humans in pods, and those humans came out turning into swarm. This is true. You know, and the locusts still are obviously not dead. Right, they're there. They're Somehow totally there. or another, they're commanding that shit. Exactly. So they're the like the strongest of the locust. It's like they got the put into standby mode. Yeah. When okay, because Gears Three ends with Marcus's dad setting off basically a not a bomb, but it I don't remember how they described the uh, like a virus type thing. The weapon he used, more <clears throat> or less, yeah. It was like a like a shock wave. Yeah, it was like a a, a shock wave that was supposed to interact with particular like a biological EMP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Thaddeus. That mm-hmm. that was beautifully described. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can't remember if he said it to interact with the emulsion or if they just did it to interact with the locust physiology, but because we know the locusts are like insects, and if any of them had changed to outside of what that physiology might be considered by him at the time, they survived. Well, that's true. Or they crystallized up, you know, in, in their cocoons right yeah they're basically insects there's a reason you call them grubs they bugs dude so what we learned is <laughs> this bugs. is all just a lesson on evolution <laughs> sure. welcome to science class bitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's always more fun with chainsaws I, yeah, you know right. yeah. i gotta say too like uh wheeling back a little bit in the story when you go and find marcus and like you think he's dead like I set my controller down and I was like, if he freaking dies, I'm stopping right now. <laughs> Dude, I I will not I have zero problem telling you I fing started tearing up when he didn't fing I'm like, you sons of bitches. Yeah, I was like, no. I thought it was No, dead. come yeah. on. Yeah. Right? Like no you can't do that. You can't kill Dom and then kill Marcus. Yeah. Not like it this. Just, no, it's just not, not like you can't this. bring him back and then kill him. But they kill people in every game. That's what they do. Yeah. That's that's kind of the thing is when I saw the first release trailer for this game and you see Marcus take one of those spines in the shoulder and then that thing wraps around his neck and he gets drug into that cave, I was like, that's it. He's dead. Because that's what <laughs> Gears does is they kill your favorite people. Yeah. They take them like away from thrones. you. That's why Bear's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. People die. Yeah. And they're replaced. Yeah. You know? And Ty, what's the other? Uh, uh, Kai, I don't care about Kai, Ty. Like Kai, uh, the first guy who led them in Gears One, he's dead. Kim, Kim, thank you, Kim. Well, he was like a nothing character too, huh? Kim and Ty. I mean, if you don't know the the more and whatnot, and you only start with the games, then Kim and Ty are expendable. They're not quite as major characters. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Not like Dom, which oh, was a feels. long played out storyline and yep. 
his storyline alone is a sad one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's back. <sighs> oh, so, <laughs> so another thing that um, Circuit and I theorized on is um, what's the relation between the Phoenix family and Mira and her bloodline? Right. Exactly. <laughs> because there's no King Locust. And Mira and Adam seem to have some sort of low key, subtly hinted at something. Maybe even and, before she went all pale locusty. I mean, as I'm actually reading Asphalt Fields right now, unfortunately, it's not that incident. It's not that exciting, but I'm in ep- chapter five. Um, ev- evidently, uh, Marcus's mother went missing when he was about 14. Mm-hmm. And but his mother's name was Elaine. I'm not saying you can't change your name. So I don't know whether or not they found her. And don't tell me if they did. Anybody out there? Because I'll kick you. <laughs> but uh, as a theory, and it's probably it could be wrong, but maybe she's his wife. Hmm. Maybe she because he was then he was an engineer and she was a scientist or some or the other way around something like that. So they both had a very big presence in the scientific field at the very right. least in the cog. So had she found something that was super important and he went to go join the locust and become the queen? Who the f- knows? She, she could have been, been kidnapped pregnant. for her knowledge. Yeah, possible. Because Adam was really, you find out, working on a way, or he was trying to work on a way for a long time with Mira, like throughout even Gears 1, to save humanity and the locust yeah let them exist peacefully because the real reason the locusts were coming up out of the ground and killing all of us besides us shooting him in the heads as soon as they crawled out from the ground is emulsion yeah it's the yellow stuff that we were using for power long story short it's kind of the fracking conspiracy gone horribly wrong right yeah you know is here's this yellow gold in the ground. We use it to power everything. We're farming it. We're harvesting it. We use it in everything. And you've got seismic activity underground. It starts getting into the locusts areas and they start getting infected by it. And it's kind of like got a mind of its own, or it's at least making them sick enough to act erratically. Right. Yeah. So then you've got a civil war between two different branches of the locust underground. The, less evil one comes up and that's who we see predominantly but i mean you start you see emulsion sickness in even the first game to some degree yeah so, i made a bigger point of it in, in gears <laughs> too yep yep and and in three it's taken a, a whole new level of of evolution in, in and of itself so what emulsion actually is i don't know it's kind of like this the the swarm or not not the swarm uh Oh, brain fart the flood thank you like the flood or like the creep from starcraft it's it's like this maybe it's a living stuff that maybe has a mind of its own maybe it's, it's an like older the organism from spider-man yeah 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 ish yeah ish. so <laughs> so that's the question um but did adam and mira bang probably was Raina their daughter? Could be. Does that make it weird if JD and Kate <laughs> That's what up? I was saying. Yep. Yep. Only. <laughs> it's going to be a little weird. That's like royal bloodlines trying to keep pure there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, clearly Gears 5 is going to, I can almost safely say, revolve around Kate trying to dig up who her grandmother was and pursuing that rabbit hole or potentially the rest of the swarm coming after her because yeah. they done killed Reyna and they need someone of that bloodline to right, take her place. Right. Yep. 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 But the question, Oscar is alive. Reyna's brother. Yeah. yeah. Now, is he your brother? Presuming he's not adopted or anything or she wasn't adopted. They, they're brother and sister. Um, That's a gross age gap. But, but well, he, he didn't treat himself very well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think the locusts need a human female to transform into their queen. Otherwise, I mean, wouldn't they find a male? Why do they need a female? They had Mira. 
they need her bloodline, right? They tried to go capture Reyna, and they did. And they had her hooked up to that thing. So now that she is gone, they could go after Oscar, or if they need a female, Kate. Yep. Yeah. They need a female. They're like ants. They need a queen. And why they need that, I'm not completely sure if there's some other controlling entity that drives them to do that or if it's just kind of insect mentality you know like we need the queen bee yeah the 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 ant has a has a a pecking order so to say you know a hierarchy so maybe that's all there is to it maybe it's a lot simpler than we think and they're just like we need a leader so we can thrive and that's how we work yep so so real quick, it's gonna be it. real quick, guys, I want to ask you before we move on to Word on the Tweet, 1 to 10, what's your rating of Gears? Dirty? Eight and a half. Circuit? Oh, take a page out of Mule's book. I'm going to go with a 7.5, mostly because of the microtransactions. Hmm. That is? I'd say an 8. I haven't played a Horde yet, but uh, I'd say an 8. I loved it. I'm going to say 8.3. <laughs> Do the campaign? I'd, I'd give a nine. Campaign you is know, epic. Horde yeah. mode, horde Honestly, mode, about the same. Yeah, but, but the little I've played from Horde and the campaign is the only reason I'm giving it the eight point five. Because again, it's yeah, it could be a, a gears game for for the new generation, but at the same time, you still have that old generation that's still very much around, that still very much loves to play the game. And again, they did, I just feel like they squandered a, a perfect and golden opportunity to change that up and not just carbon yeah. copy the the old games. Got a couple new guns, but I, I don't use the drop shot ever. No, oh, no. <laughs> However, I did find that once the drop shot got me perfectly, I didn't know it. It would drill through your body. That oh, you is can awesome. Get headshots with it. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "What's going on?" Oh, awesome! I died amazingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta I hated appreciate most the of... beauty and the gore. Yeah, yeah. I hated a majority of the freaking. New cogs weapons. I hated the enforcer. I hated the shock enforcer. I hated the shock grenades. I didn't like the M bar. Oh, I love the M bar actually. I like that a lot. Uh, Just give me a I mean, shot. It's good for like the giant pro- protectors or whatever they are during a couple of the horde waves in the campaign where it's all like, mm, oh, you're you don't have a head, then you're not going to blow up. That's cool. <laughs> but, That's splash damage. Yeah. 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 I like the uh, the buzz kill, the buzz saw thing. That was That's fun. fun. That was a fun gun. It's but not in the fun. windstorm though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, that thing was a waste. I wasted all of, I didn't hit one single guy in those uh yeah. in the wind shears or whatever they call them. Yeah. Wind flares. Yeah. Wind I flares, fucking, yeah. I hated those so much. Like like what's happening to what's happening to Sarah real quick, last point. That that all of this shit is happening on on there. Like maybe it's just in a different area or a different country equivalent. You know, cuz they don't get don't tornadoes well, they said, in every They said area. it was storms were getting worse. And then some theorize it's because of all the uh, planetary cracks of, you know, attacking the locust. Right. Okay. So maybe well, something from 25 years. Yeah. But they also said that and I, I tend to believe the dialogue from Marcus when he says that it's the cog. They're going to lie when they don't want you to know about it. Hmm. Exactly. Well, it's not something they're probably going to go into, but at the same time, it's worth asking like razor hail and wind flares and whatever the hell is crazy weather they fucking got over there. I, I think we're on to something in that, yes, these are probably byproducts of the weapons of mass destruction used by the COG in the previous games, but how it actually affected the environment and taking responsibility for it, probably not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes for a cool campaign. Oh, show. Yep. yep. Sweet, guys. Well, let's go ahead and move on to Word on the Tweet. Twerk that tweet. Word on the tweet. All right. So our first word on the tweet is from Jason S. Ray, or also named as, known as Dobby23. And he says, hashtag word on the tweet. Who is Luke Skywalker? That's the question that drove development of The Force Awakens. How would you answer? Can I start? Can I start? He's a whiny little bitch. Can I start? So do it, mule. Do it. Who's Luke Skywalker? I think he, it, I mean, he obviously he's the most powerful force user ever in uh, the universe. 
Uh, so I think when you watch the force awakens and you watch how they dealt with him and how they portrayed him, I thought it was really well, because if you watch him through episode four through six, you see him go from kind of a whiny Anakin type figure to a little bit more serious to very serious to, I could literally destroy the galaxy if I want to, or I could bring peace to the galaxy. And I think they portray that conflict in him pretty good, especially at the end of, of uh, episode seven, when he just turns and looks at Ray, he's just full of all these emotions and you can see the Skywalker side of him. That's very emotional because Skywalkers are emotional. And at the same time, you can see him, the Jedi in him containing that and focusing that in. So for me, Luke Skywalker is probably the most BA person you could get in the universe. And the way they portrayed him so far, I thought they've done a pretty good job, but guys, I think Anakin was, was prophesied, prophesized to be the one who brings balance to the force. Um, I think that is through his kids more likely because he clearly didn't do that. (laughs) No. Um, I think that burden has now fallen to Luke and that's kind of, you know, what his character represents in the story. I mean, Star Wars is a much, much, much bigger, broader, wider story than the small soap opera that goes on within the Skywalker family and their their relatives and friends and cohorts and everything. I, they're, they're largely like the gods or titans in the story who move the mountains, who destroy planets, who, who cause the big events to happen. They're almost more like metaphors. So Luke is supposed to be the one who actually brings balance back to the force and is supposed to get rid of quote unquote, you know, he's supposed to give her the dark side because the light side is balance, right? According to the Jedi anyways. <laughs> so, Dirty shaking his head. <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know. But I mean that that's you know, however you want to interpret it, that's basically what Lucas said is that the dark side is imbalance and the light side is balance. And that's what Luke is supposed to do. Now, he's been in hiding for a long ass time. He pulled an old Ben, he pulled a Yoda, flying to Dagobah. He's like, if I'm found, this everything is screwed. Yeah. If I'm found before I'm ready, before I have a, a Padawan to take on, because I'm guessing Ren basically killed everyone. Yeah. All over again. Back back to square one. Right? Yep. Back to hiding like a hermit. So maybe even Luke has failed. So it could be there's somebody else in the Skywalker family who's going to pick up the torch. Oh, but nay. Rumors and speculation. So we heard dirty. Can't wait for rain. He said whiny. <laughs> Thaddeus. Um, I have to pretty much agree with you on that, Mule. I mean, I'm not the uber Star Wars fan and follower, but I do like it quite a bit. Um, He's pretty badass. He definitely is emotional. I think the the reason those Skywalkers are so emotional because the dark side, the Force can feed off your emotion and make you more powerful. And the you know the the Sith know that about the Skywalkers. Um, that's why they're they're sought after to be to be you know to be powerful Sith. But um, yeah, he's just pretty much the you know the driving balancing force and. Uh, like we see, he pulled a Yoda, pulled a Ben. You know, he knows that if he's found and things are done uh, are undone too soon, you know, it's the galaxy is screwed. Yep, yep. Maybe he should have hid better then. Oh dang! I think it all fell in place. All the Metaclorians fell in the right place, right time. <laughs> 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 I think he just held, <laughs> held well or hid well enough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was Ray who found him. It so. took the entire galaxy. To Years. try to track him down, and one person did it who actually yeah. could be related. Dude, that deleted scene from episode eight that I saw an article posted about. Yeah, man, you know the the old fat ass slug guy who basically traded uh the soylent green for Ray's scraps yeah. from the the Imperial ships and stuff. Apparently, he follows her after she steals the Millennium Falcon and. She hooks up with uh, with Chewie, with Han. They land 
on uh what was what was the planet they landed on with uh i don't remember the the planet goggle lady yeah but they went to the casino yeah 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 he he follows her there and gets her cornered and then chewy rolls up he's like (laughs) hey leave her alone (laughs) yeah so this dude turns around and he starts poking him like he's he's not intimidated by chewy and like Han said, you got to let the Chewie win because he rips the dude's arm off and just pitches it. Later, dude. <laughs> yeah. You don't have an arm now. You're going to die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the Chewie we need to see some more. The scoundrel yeah. Chewie. Yep. You know, the angry Chewie. Not always the sweet, adorable teddy bear Chewie. Yeah. Well, I think after um, Han dies, it all changes back, probably. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. He's going to yeah. come back with black fur. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be all moody and be like, he's a Chewbacca he's be all emo <laughs> yeah. he'll have a swoop a first swoop yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got calling it so the, the next word on the tweet is from our bro Corgi Commander and uh, he says historically game based movies have sucked could you say the same or could the same be said about m- movie based games any faves hashtag word on the tweet so I only got one good example yeah Golden Eye 007. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a great one. That is a good one. I can't think of any other movies that turned into games that I just thought were really good. You know? Mostly they didn't. Yeah. Like I don't, back in the. No. But, you know. Some of the X Men games were good, but I'm, I'm thinking like Nintendo and Genesis era, and those were TV shows. So. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't count. I, I will say the old. The old school uncanny X-Men cartoon that they turned into a video game was not that bad. That was pretty fun. Um, I can't remember what system that was on. I think original Xbox, but, uh, but yeah, that wasn't bad, but there's not a lot that I can think of that. I'm just like, Oh yeah, that was good. That was good. No. Oh, we have talked about again, star Wars, the super star Wars, Super Empire, Super Return of the Jedi series on Super Nintendo. That's true. I forgot about those. That's shit. That those, good. Are good. those are good. Those are good ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, mostly uh, he's right. Nope. You got it, Corgi. <laughs> Big bag of nope. Big bag, Big bag of nopes. <laughs> so our next one's from at Drake, Drake. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Draco Augustus. And he says, what would a game have to accomplish to be the next destiny? When destiny just keeps going strong. Hashtag world in the tweet. Mm. Dude. Well. Dirty. Go ahead. Okay. (laughs) I kind of feel like in this uh, time, if you will, (sighs) any game that tries to be the next destiny will catch just the biggest ton of flack from any community because we saw that with the division and all the little diehard Dick bags that are all like, oh my god, it's destiny, they're taking destiny. <laughs> but um <laughs> honestly, they'd have to to make it a better destiny, they'd have to basically take the last three years of destiny, build up what they've done, and generally make it better. Better, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to they'd say have to, it go ahead. Oh, you're I was, going I was, I was gonna finish it up, but they were they'd have to uh put their own spin on it, whoever it would be. Cause you can say it's going to be the division or you can say it's going to be destiny or whatever, but it's going to be the original f-ing RPG that ever came out the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Cause that's where they're all getting it from. Yeah. As we covered many moons ago. So I got some thoughts, but I want to hear you guys first. I have to say that they would have to do what Bungie did with Basically changing or I guess you say revolutionizing the, the gaming community in a certain way. Uh, like Dirty said, they have to build off what they've done, but do better. But I think maybe they have to maybe possibly do it in a completely different way so that it's not viewed in the gaming community as trying to clone yeah. right. what Destiny right. has done, but have the same effect, but in a different way. So an entirely new audience is built. Um, of course, some some will definitely migrate and play it as well, but it'll have to be that type of revolution in a different way. How that looks, I have no idea. Circuit, you um, got yeah, yeah, I got a couple, man. I think when he says, quote-unquote, the next destiny, 
he I think the division was touted as that. Not I mean not by massive, but by no. you know the hype train Some community. Yeah, uh, that it had similar audiences in that it's online, quasi open world, and I say quasi because they both appeal to that somewhat. You know, it's they're socially based games and have MMO structure. Yeah. No matter if you want to call Destiny an MMO, you want to call The Division an MMO, I'm sorry, if you do not think that the bones of those games are 110% MMO, you're wrong, because they are. They're built on L grind, my friends. I mean, that's just, at the end of the day, Destiny has kind of perfected that art. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've got enough of an open world situation. You have a social area, you got clans, you have seemingly limitless upgrade options to a point in which you hit maximum light level. And then there's end game. There's freaking raids for crying out loud. The whole thing is like halo and an MMO got together and had a baby. Yeah, totally. I mean, the end they basically they took the Twitch smooth, awesome gameplay that they knew how to create from working on Halo, mixed it with the crack heroin addiction quality of massively multiplayer online RPGs, mm-hmm. and that's Destiny. It's it's not always been perfect, yeah, but I think as close as they could have gotten for having to all but scrap the initial version of the game, yeah. I think they hit the nail pretty damn close to the middle of the head. Um, right. The only thing I could think that maybe would have stood a chance of doing the same thing was Elder Scrolls Online. If that would have been made like Skyrim, same engine, played like Skyrim, and had the MMO qualities around it, not the hotkey bullshit, not all the MMOE, lower graphics, that kind of thing. If it would have had the quality that we expect in an Elder Scrolls game, I think it totally, totally could have been just as popular. Yeah. So I think, and most of you guys are going to know where I'm probably going to go with this, but uh, I think there's one game that's set up that could be very much like or as big as Destiny. And uh, the reason I say that is because it has a dedicated fan base that has followed it for years it has space magic it's in space it has tech let me guess and it has rpg elements and it it rhymes with ass bluffect (laughs) mass effect (laughs) exactly dude because and then get this that you know there may be that new strategy mode that's thrown in there with uh, a multiplayer aspect to, to the game so you got tons of exploration. You got great story writing because Bioware has always done great with story writing. You got you got the you know the space magic like Destiny does. You got the shooter mechanics, even though it's third person. Um, so I really think with something like that, that you could see it be on the level of Destiny uh, because there's just there's a very dedicated fan base for Mass Effect. And uh, And 90% of it is on our podcast. Yeah. me. (laughs) (laughs) I I agree to a degree, but if they don't have somewhat of the same level of openness that destiny has or aim for even higher, like that of an MMO, I don't think that would happen. Well, that's the thing. I think it's primarily a one player campaign oriented machine. And I know that you played uh, way, way, way too much multiplayer for mass effect (laughs) three, but that was not like, main campaign stuff was it that's not part of the main storyline necessarily it was mixed in with it the way they did it with three uh because you had to have a readiness level but the new strategy mode may have some mmo elements to it to where it's i mean because they're going to make it more open world where you can go explore you have all these planets you can visit you can establish colonies or you can destroy colonies but can you be neighbors with another player can i go to your colony can i destroy your colony if i'm doing a mission can you come help me with it? That's my question. Yeah. Like, how social are they going to make it? Because if they don't do that stuff, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice Thaddeus. 
<laughs> What's even better than the sound of that was the look on his face. Oh yeah, King on screen. Should have been here. Yeah. Hey, that, that's two podcasts in a row. Yeah, I get what you're saying, man. Like, and I yeah. think they may have some elements like that. I don't know. It's all rumor and hearsay right now. So, right. But uh, I'm not saying they need to either. Yeah. But I mean, in regards to Corgi's question, uh. Or I'm sorry, not Corgi's, uh, uh, Draco's question. If it was going to be the next, quote unquote, the next destiny, I think that's the level they'd have to aim for. You know? Yeah. I don't know if that game will ever touch the numbers, the sheer numbers behind destiny, and especially how much of destiny is based on streamability. Yeah. And now esports viability. Yeah. They're heading in that arena. And if all the crap we heard come out of, uh, shinobi um is true then they're just pouring more coal into that engine man yep yep so our next word on tweets from at loki kills all and he says will the changes coming to the division at 1.4 update be next week be enough to bring you back hashtag word on the tweet hmm. probably not you know, you know what i gotta say that that's a big bag of nopes Big I mean, nopes. it sounds like it's going to like really improve the game. And for the people that stuck around and really enjoy playing yeah. it, I think it, they're going to love it. That's the thing. They're going to love that it. That I've seen, you know, on Twitter and our own chat group that has, uh, that has their, their section for the division. They seem very excited yeah. for this update. So it's going to, you know, probably rekindle some of the fan base that's been waiting to get back into it um, with whatever's coming this update. But for someone like myself or you guys that haven't played it in a very long time, I've just moved past. Have we moved on to other titles? Yeah, yeah, probably not. Yeah, I mean, unless it's not content, that that's my only thing. It's not content. I mean, they fixed some stuff. Great, that's cool. That's that's really good. If you've been playing it and you've been suffering, I don't know why you kept going with it. But if you liked the game and you wanted it to be a little bit better or a little more balanced or more difficult or more easy, I don't I don't know what what everybody's qualms were with it but there were imbalances there were uh high disparities between between level classes and damage output and people running into each other in the dark zone and just being able to waylay others that that's probably good for people who are currently playing the division but i do not personally see a whole bunch of people going to return to it because you're going to go in there and say well yeah i mean i guess it's it's oiled up nice and good now, but what am I going? Where am I going to drive this vehicle? Yeah, you know, Need some maybe deals for the next expansion. Like, okay, now these bones work well. Where's the meat? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? beef like, what's for dinner? Give me survival. Like, give me the next the next expansion. Uh, I'll entertain it. I'll entertain that. Yeah. Like, I'll reinstall it and try it out. But this update in and of itself. Adding a few mobs to the to the open world. Yeah. No, not really doing it for me. So the next word on the tweets from at Johnny Cage Data Five, and he says, "What do you guys think of the Nintendo Switch?" I saw a Mario and Zelda along with NBA and Skyrim thoughts. Hashtag word on the tweet. And you know what? I didn't bring this up earlier, but you know what it's perfect for. And we all do it on our phones. Poop gaming. Mobile gaming. Poop gaming. Yep. Poop. Oh, yeah. It's going to be perfect for poop gaming. Dude, we can all just be like, hey, synchronized bathroom break at work. <laughs> Mario Party. <laughs> Let's do this. Assuming that it has a built in VPN. Instead of a LAN network, it's a last network, a local area stall. Yeah. Dude, what if you can hook this thing up to mobile networks oh that's no. an idea well they had the two sitting across from each other while they were playing nba so there's clearly some level of well local between yeah connectability. at least i mean, yeah. I mean right infrared or or lo- some sort of local wireless but i mean like satellites like 4g like yeah possibly you know we were talking about like it, it could have limitations with games that need wi-fi how do you encourage someone to take an internet required game out yeah into the open out out to the park outside I mean, of a yeah, hotspot you can you can go to starbucks or or mcdonald's or any place that has wi-fi but besides that you're going to be limited with some of those games right mm-hmm. true that yeah true that yeah 
So our last word on the tweet is from at 12th Moose. And he says, do you think Nintendo has a hit with the Switch or will this be another gimmick system without staying power? I think it'll be both. I think it's going to be a huge hit because it's Nintendo. People will buy it, kind of like we were talking about earlier. But will it then turn into the Wii where it just sits and collects dust? You know? See, right. I kind of... I, I honestly think this one will have a little bit more staying power than the Wii. I think the lineup that they have coming out is going to go gimmick and then staying power. The NES Mini is a gimmick. The Switch mm-hmm. will probably have a little bit more steam. Yeah. Well, we're seeing Nintendo team up with more outside companies than we've ever seen them do in the past. Yeah. You know, they've always they been need so to at much this point. like on their own island. No pun intended. That's not a Japanese <laughs> joke. It's just, just that they are, <laughs> they've always <laughs> kept it as, as closed in on the Nintendo circle as possible. They only recently finally agreed to work with one company to do mobile games. And that's D E N A. And they now are full on merger mode and they're fully working on this with them. So they swing for the fences when they do finally decide to fucking swing. It's all about third parties, man. They got to get more of those third parties like they got. So they need the help. Yeah. People, I mean, people like Zelda, people like Mario, but sorry, those, those are games that talk about gimmicks. Zelda has gimmicks. Mario has gimmicks. Now it looks like we may actually get some, classic looking like Nintendo 64 era classic looking Mario and Zelda titles on this thing. Yeah. You know, not Mario spraying with a hose who no one gives a flying fuck about (laughs) jumping around on another orb. Thanks. That's neat physics guys. But where's Mario? Where's the Mario game? You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. But it is a gimmick like the cell shading little kid link. Meh. Yeah. You know, I want a big, long, epic story with a somewhat open world. Like, they know what we want. And I think they finally now know that we're all 30 and they're not going to appeal to purely eight year olds every time they release something. Mm hmm. Yep. Because without the the third parties, they've stayed in gimmick status because they got kitty games. Yeah. But now that they've got bigger names, we're hopefully working for them. Hopefully that was a real picture and not photoshopped or some shit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, a year is open. Yeah. Well, now they've got colleagues and peers to pressure them to say, no, no, don't do that. That's stupid. That is so dumb. Do this instead. Do this. This will sell because people want this. You know? Yeah. Yep. Hope you know not. what should happen? I think Sega should make a comeback. Sega. They're partially owned by Nintendo, or at least under contract to make games for Nintendo now. That's that's just adding insult to injury. Yeah. All the Sonic games have been coming out on Nintendo. That's that's true. Still. I, I'd have to look into it, but I mean yes, it, it is, like Nintendo and Pac-Man Sega. Like later. Yeah. But dude, I'd love to see Sega make a comeback just to piss off Nintendo. <laughs> I don't know what they but what they could even do. What I don't Sonic? know either, but it'd be funny as shit to see. <laughs> Vector Man. <laughs> Vector Man. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think they'd have it in them. They, they don't have the... Uh, it, it would be fun to see, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sweet, guys. That was a fun cast. Getting to talk some gears and all the other full, the fun stuff with uh, Red Dead, Nintendo, and all the other good stuff. So... Let's put a bow on it and just close this bad boy up. If you could, guys, leave us a review on iTunes. That helps us a freaking buttload. Like us on Facebook. You can follow us all on Twitter. You got at Dirty Bomb Bombs. You got it's just Dirty Bombs, you fool. <laughs> you got at Circuit Eight. You got at Thaddeus Prime. I'm of course, asleep. all of us at Norn Gaming. And remember, guys, when in doubt, blow it up. Blow it up.
Cause we can't stop. No, we won't stop.